Hi, everybody. I'm Ishai. I'm an Android developer at Glide. And I'm Roy, a CTO. And I'm thrilled to be here uh, at the Firebase, talk about our experience with Firebase, how it uh, helps us, some of the things that Steve just talked about, how we use them, and how it affects our life as a company. So we're going to talk briefly about quality. And all of you have experience with QA engineers, labs. You probably have a few devices. Maybe you're using uh, cloud, the cloud service. Um, we have hundreds of devices in labs. But we learned something that most of you know. It doesn't matter how much testing you do internally, how much testing you do with some crowd testing or better groups, you will never be able to get to this specific device, specific network condition, and that specific use case that one device uh, and one user had, um, which is just one out of millions. Uh, before we dig any farther, I'll just briefly introduce Glide. Glide is a messaging platform, and we, our goal is to have to create a platform for authentic communication between human beings. Uh, we believe that a smile is much better than a smiley. And for that, the best way we believe is uh, uh, asynchronous live video communication. Um, we're available on multiple platforms, and we're very excited about the wrist-worn new platforms, or relatively new. Um, it's the right place to actually communicate, um, more accessible. We've been working with the Google Wear team for uh, quite a while, and already now you can download um, Glide and use it on your Wear device, and you'll be able to see live video of your colleagues, friends, and families, and be able to respond with live audio or text. Um, obviously, we're missing just one thing, which is a camera. And I'm happy to say that last Wednesday, Glide has announced to the world CMRA camera, which is the basically adding the camera functionality to the wearable device initially, just for the Apple Watch. Um, two HD cameras, one front-facing, one outward-facing, that allows you to quickly communicate with your friends. By the way, it's going to be open, so any developer will be able to use the camera for its own app. Um, so we talked about <laughs> quality, and obviously we want to find out things uh, sooner than later. Uh, we're going to share that, in our case, it, it's not always true. Well, one of the first things the application does upon connection to the server is sync all the relevant and new information in order to display it to the user as fast as possible. So part of that is receiving chat IDs of chats that I'm part of, and then requesting relevant information about them among them is the last messages. Now, <clears throat> what happens if an application requests information about a chat that it's not part of? Well, thankfully for that, we have security measures, and those security measures will return a negative answer to the user, to the application, saying you cannot have this information, you're not part of this chat. So, a few years back, we had not many, just a few devices, that, as a mistake, got chat IDs of chats that they were not part of. So they requested information and requested the last few messages from those chats and received an answer that was no. Unfortunately, those clients did not have no as an answer and kept on requesting again and again and again as fast as they could Every time a negative answer came back, a new request came in. As a result from that, our servers crashed, and a few alarms were raised. Yeah, that was uh, probably one of those days that we were 
trying to fix the server to make them not crash on those repeated events, hack around it, at the same time try to locate the problem on the client side and fix it. Um, that image is very reflective of that day. Anyway, that is not, is this on? That is not the only problem when maintaining a big application. Yeah, maybe. There's um, we wanna, it's, I think it's obvious that the sooner you find a problem, uh, the better it is. And our purpose in life is to make user experience best. And we face challenges in finding those problems soon. And uh, as we all know, Android has some OSs that are live at the same time. If you support multiple platforms, you will have a few application files live at the same time. If you support multiple platforms, you will have that on different stores simultaneously. And if you have different hardwares, if you deal with video streaming, which is what we do, then you have also vendor issues. Now, the problem is that once you have so much information, it becomes a bit hard to understand and analyze that. You have a large array of analytics platforms and crash logging platforms, and it takes time and resources and people to gather all this information into one place and then analyze it. And if a bug happens, you need to understand what the impact is on the end user. If it's destroying your current app, or is it the bug that you're currently fixing? And that is something that you have to know as fast as possible. We encountered a lot of issues because there was a lot of data on a lot of places, and we didn't have enough time to analyze it. And this is basically where Firebase comes in. As you can see here, we have filtered by uh, an application version as we are releasing it. We have all the relevant information about the health status of the current release, and we know how many users are using it. So if we actually find a crash, which occasionally happens, we can actually know if it's a bad one or if it's OK. And generally try and fix it as fast as possible, but we prioritize according to the impact on the end user. Yeah, so what you can see here is how Firebase actually affected our rollout uh, release. Um, typically, we start with low percentages and try to understand what's the impact of users on users, um, what kind of issues they face, and as Shai said, are those critical, um, et cetera, et cetera. On an average release, Firebase Analytics that you seen Steve used, uh, have reduced our rollout from beta testing to 100% from approximately 10 days to 7 days. But it's even way stronger when we're using uh, that for a patch release, when we have something that is a fire or close to a fire, something that we want to release quickly. Um, we're able to typically release in a very safe way within 48 hours. That slow release is typically affected also by the fact that we live in a different time zone than most of our users. And that's probably common for many of you here. Most of our users are in the States. That means that when we want to test things and see the events, if we don't wait for the late night hours, it's going to take a, a day for a cycle. Integrating Firebase has been very easy. Literally, three lines of code. We add it into our configuration files, and this, I think, is not even needed anymore because it happens automatically. We tell Firebase Crash Reporting we had a crash. Uh, again, I think this already happens automatically now. So basically, it's two lines of code. We got everything back. We sped up all of our release cycles, and life is much, much better now. Thank you very much.